Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be tackling the Biorb Air Jungle. As you can see, it's severely overgrown. I have been meaning to give it a prune for quite a while, probably a few months actually. Ideally, I need to rescape the whole thing, but for now I'm going to be giving it a good old trim, specifically the Fetonia and I'm going to be showing you how to propagate Fetonia in water and also how to propagate a jewel orchid. Also something to mention, somehow I have got some tiny, tiny little snails in here and they have been eating my Dacinia marmorata and they also ate my little baby Warroquianum, which is quite disappointing. I don't know how they got in here but when I'm giving it a prune, I'll have a look and see if there's any more, and if so, obviously get rid of them. So first of all, I'm going to be giving it a good old trim, and then once I've finished, I'll show you how to propagate the Fetonia and the Jewel Orchids. Before I start hacking away at it, I thought I'd give you a glimpse from the top. As you can see, everything's looking super healthy. It's just severely overcrowded. The Fetonia have grown the most, but then also the jewel orchids have gone crazy. They're all flowering. I am going to cut these flower spikes off. The flower spike on the Dacinia marmorata has already finished flowering and it needs cutting off. My Begonia amphioxus has grown quite a bit and I really need to make some room around it so it can thrive and I'm not sure whether to take out my Dacinia marmorata because it's taking up quite a bit of room but we'll see and also the Syngonium is getting quite large but again I'll just start pruning it and then see what it's looking like it looks really beautiful from the top not so much from the side at the moment but it will be beautiful again after I've finished with it So now that I've pruned back the Fetonia, you can actually see the jewel orchids and the Begonia amphioxus. Hopefully I didn't disturb it too much because I know they can throw a bit of a fit if you touch them. This was actually one that died and came back to life. I think I moved it about three or four inches and it threw a fit, it dropped all its leaves. But the leaves that did drop from it actually rooted in the moss and then it's grown this new plant which seems to be doing quite well. All the jewel orchids are really big now. As you saw when I was pruning it I did cut off the flower spikes and today I'm going to be propagating them by stem. You can actually divide them at the root. They do throw out pups around the base which you can separate from the mother plant but I'm just going to be giving them a bit of a trim and then propagating them by stem in water. So basically to propagate a jewel orchid by stem you're just looking for a node which is this lumpy part here. You're going to be cutting a little bit below it and then once you pop it in water you'll see that roots will start appearing from the node. It can take some time for roots to start forming. With my Dacinia marmorata I actually broke a piece of it off by mistake in January. Popped it in some water and it took about six or seven weeks to start producing roots but be patient they will produce roots eventually i'll show you the piece that i propagated in a moment so next i'm going to be taking a cutting or two from the jewel orchids 
and then I'll show you what to do with them. So with your jewel orchid cutting, you're going to need to remove any leaves that are next to the node because you're going to be putting this part in water. So it's a bit sad cutting off this leaf because it's so beautiful, but it has to be done. So I'm going to be popping this guy in some water, handy shot glass, perfect. Cheers. Same with the other one. So I'm going to be keeping these cuttings on my east facing windowsill, which is my kitchen. That's where I kept my Dicinia marmorata cutting, which I'll show you now. So as I mentioned, this is a part of the plant that I actually broke off by mistake. And I popped it in water back in January. I think it was the end of January. And as you can see, it now has some roots. Let me take it out of the glass and show you. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this guy yet. I might just leave him in water for now. He seems quite happy. And there is a new leaf coming if you look closely. I also took out my other Dicinia marmorata from my Biorb Air, just because it was taking up too much room and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm gonna have a look in a moment and then decide. So with the Fetonia cutting, you're going to need to cut off all the bottom leaves. I recommend just leaving a few leaves at the top. If you do leave too many leaves on, they will start wilting and the cutting may not be successful. So for best results, just trim off most of the leaves. I apologize if I've got soil in my nails. I didn't wear my gloves today. So this is what you're left with. You can cut some more leaves off. I usually just leave three or four at the top and then just pop him in some water. I have tried propagating Fetonia in soil before, but I had a better success propagating them in water. They seem to grow roots really quickly in water. And again, I keep these on my bright east facing kitchen window. So I'm going to go ahead and trim up the other Fetonia cuttings. So here they are in their new home. I'm just going to pop these on the windowsill and it won't be long before they grow roots. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but they do look really pretty just sitting in this glass. I did remove my Syngonium. So I'm actually going to pot him up and maybe put him in my office. He's getting a little bit too big for the biob. Look at that beautiful variegation on the newest leaf. He was obviously loving the environment in there, nice, warm and humid and bright. Wow, what a mess I have made. It's going to be fun clearing that up. Anyway, so once your cuttings have grown some roots, you can then pot them up. You can actually propagate the jewel orchid cuttings in sphagnum moss, but I don't seem to have much luck with propagating things in moss. I've always had really good success with propagating plants in water. So I'm going to be sticking with water for mine, but if you're good with moss and you're used to propagating things in moss, it can be done. With the Fetonia, you can just pot these up in soil once they've got a few roots and it won't take long before they take off. I thought I may as well just show you the potting up of my Syngonium. I'm just going to be using my usual soil mix which I showed in a video recently. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it below for you and on the screen. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit in the bottom. He's got some pretty good roots on him. So I might have to just kind of curl them round inside the pot a little bit. He'll probably need to be upgraded to a bigger pot soon. I'm imagining. This will do for now. Once he's watered, I'll be putting him in his new lovely ceramic pot. 
you would probably appreciate a pole or something to climb up. I might put a bit of bamboo in there. Once he's in his new home, I'll show you at the end of the video. It looks a bit bare in here now. It's just like a carpet of moss in the middle. But I'm hoping now the Begonia Amphioxus will spread out a bit. I did cut its very bottom leaf off and just put it back in the moss, hoping that it will reroot. But as I said, I do need to rescape the whole biob. But that's for another day when I've got a bit more time. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, just leave them below. Hope you're all well. Take care and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye everyone.